the central coast of California is known for its high quality of life, small town atmosphere, award-winning golf courses and wineries, great weather, and our proximity to the spectacular coastline. But beneath it all, hiding in the shadows, is a sinister culture that infects our communities. Violent criminal street gangs are no longer a problem unique to big cities. They exist right here among us. They are becoming more organized and bold than ever before. Using manipulation and deception to recruit our youth, these gangs are ruining lives and destroying families. It is time to tell the truth, expose the lies. For many gang-involved youth, their lifestyle is a life facing bars. There are over 1,000 documented gang members in the city of Santa Maria. Between late 2009 to 2013, 88% of the murders in the city were gang related. The disease of street gangs affects both San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties. There are organized criminal street gangs in Paso Robles, Napomo, Oceano, Guadalupe, Santa Maria, Lompoc, Carpinteria, Goleta, and Santa Barbara. It's time the truth be told. We are all stakeholders in the reduction of gang violence and uh, really gang membership. I've never met a young boy or girl who has ever stated that when they grow up they want to be a gang member, commit felonies, get prosecuted, um, uh, arrested by the police several times, and then spend maybe a dozen or two dozen years of their life in prison. You just don't see that. And so what we need to do is to capture these youth when they're young and impressionable. So if we can just prevent one child from joining a gang, then this video and the cost for it was worth every penny. It is our goal through this documentary to raise awareness about the gang problem on the Central Coast. First, you will hear gang members expose the truth about their lifestyle. Then we will help you understand relevant gang laws and show how gang involvement affects families. Lastly, we will emphasize how education can lead to a better future. There is nobody more qualified to educate people about the gang culture than those who have personally lived the lifestyle. Hands behind your backs, no talking. The boys are doing time with the EDGE program. It's for young men teetering on the edge of right and wrong. Wearing white jumpsuits and walking with their hands behind their backs, the boys will get a taste of prison life from those who know it best. Welcome to the EDGE program. My name is Jeremiah Daniel Wallen. I'm 31 years old. I'm doing 98 years to life for execution style murder, kidnapping, robbery. You could have told me, Jeremiah, you're on a path to doing life in prison. And I would have told you, so what? Who cares? That's what I want. My name's Adam Ibarra, better known as Little Boo Boo, from, uh, from Westside Gang in Lompoc. Banging since I was 12. I've been around gangs my whole life, third generation gang member. I was six years old at hood parties, you know what I mean? Hicking it. Um, shot my first person when I was 12, you know what I mean? I'm 28 years old right now, and out of those 28 years, I've been locked up for about a good 15 of them, you know, in and out. This last time I was out, I was out 113 days, and that's the longest I've been out since I was 13. My name is Isaiah Arroyo, you call me Cholo from Northwest, Santa Maria. I got jumped in when I was 13, 13 years old. I grew up in the projects, so it's like that area is like a lot of gang members kick it there. And I just thought, I just started hanging around with the wrong crowd. Like they carried themselves like if they were better than everybody. And like for some reason, like I, to me, it seemed like they had all the respect and like that's that's what I needed to be. Like I wanted to be like them. Well, my name is Ronnie Claiborne. Call me disciple for Nipah's Gangsters. I was 12 when I got jumped in. My mom worked out of town like six days a week and my stepdad was was Tinker, Jesse Maldonado for Nipah's. So her being gone and me being by myself, I was always right there with him, you know, and he always had all the older homies over and their kids and so on and so forth. Charges, carjacking, extortion, home invasion, robbery, gang enhancements, participating in a criminal street gang, 
for the further advancement of criminal street gang. And I was looking at approximately 20 to life. Arthur Navarro's Isai Familia, Santa Bruta, Santa Barbara. When I was a kid, there wasn't a lot of, uh, I was with my mom, there wasn't a lot of parental supervision. So it was a lot of surviving upon myself, which exposed me to criminal activity. I'm 39 years old. I first got taken into custody at the age of 17. I can't tell you how much I spent in custody. I can only tell you that I've spent about five years out of custody since. My name is Jonathan Myers from Santa Maria, from the projects, they used to call me Blanco. I started gangbanging at the age of 12. Just saw my friends, and I saw like older, older friends. Like I said, I just saw them, like what it got them. I, I thought like you would be somebody, just beating people up, jumping people, just going, going with my homies when they would shoot at people, joining a gang. Thought I'd gain you power, respect. Them low life drug addicts don't care about you, and they're not your friends. Because what type of adult, knowing the consequences, gives kids drugs and guns and watches them throw their whole life away. Just because they made it through their life away, they want to see you do the same with yours. Are those the type of people you look up to and want to grow up to be like? No. I hope not. I threw my whole life away supposedly for the hood. And let me tell you what, I didn't get nothing for it but life in prison. And all the homies that were supposed to be there for me, they all forgot about me. If you truly think that there's loyalty in street life, uh, you're in an illusion. You're in a very, very deep, deep illusion because at the end of the day, it's every man for himself. What I would tell kids that, uh, that want to be a gang member and they see all the money and the girls and the fame, it's all a mirage, you know? Your homies don't really care about you. You're in jail, you're sitting there with nothing, no soap, no hygiene, no, no deodorant, not even some toothpaste to brush your teeth. It all hits you. It's all a mirage, it's fake. They don't really love you, your family loves you. They're the only ones that's really gonna be there when it's all said and done, you know? Loyalty is non-existent in the gang. But active gang members will tell you otherwise. Active gang members use the word loyalty and these kids feel really attracted to this, to this lifestyle. Oh, wait a minute, there's loyalty here, but there's not. So the truth is, is that loyalty within the gang world is just a word. It's a word, it's a carrot on a stick. If someone from your neighborhood messes up, or even if it's your brother, a cousin, or your own father, they're gonna send you to take care of them. What you think about that, young man? Are you ready to kill your own family? They make you feel accepted so that you'll do what they want. It's all brainwashed. Like, if they could get into your head and like brainwash you to do what they want you to do, then they're gonna do it. They can expect to be anything to be used for the furtherment of other people. In other words, they will be manipulated for other people's gain. Even when it seems like that individual is trying to do something for someone else in a gang, trust and believe that he has a motive behind it. You don't run into people that just do good things for gang members, right? Oh, here's the gun, just because I'm a good guy. Or, or here's some dope, or here, we'll just go fight these guys right now and I'm gonna smash for you just because I'm a good guy. No, that's a lie. Because the thing is, is if I do this for you, I'm expecting you to do this back for me. And the minute you don't, right, you fall short. There's more, there's more out there than, than what we were meant to believe. You know, all this, the cause, there is no cause. The big homies, it's all about money. All they do is they want their money, we're dispensable. You know, like, we're like we're nothing. Like we're just dirt. So easily to throw, so easy to throw away. Like we never meant anything in the first place. Now that I changed everything, I see that all that was just an illusion. It's, there's no respect. It's just, it's just, in the end, it's just the, the whole lifestyle, you just get used, and it's just a waste of time. There's no point in it. 
the entire hierarchy is based on manipulation. It's the only thing that ties this entire organization together. You see, young men, this is the hard reality of what gangs really are. You got kids killing each other, and the people who sent them to do it are supposed to be people who love them and care for them. But let me tell you what, if you're in a gang or hang around with gang members, and you think that these fools you call your big homies care about you and love you, but you're being lied to and you're being misled. Come on now, I know you guys are smarter than that, because if a person really cared for you, they would never have you do something wrong. The reason it works, the reason that they draw you in, because the people that are telling it to you, they don't think they're lying. In their heads, everything that they're telling you is, is true to them. They actually, at, at, at that age in your life, you need something to believe in. You know, you need a, a cause in life. You need to think, all right, you know, what do I want to do when I, what do I want to be when I grow up? What do I want to do? You know, you see these people that they got money, they got cars. You know, you, you hear you hear music, you know what I mean? Going down the street with my nine and, you know, and you think that's the cool thing to do. That's the cool thing to be. But in reality, all, all it does is put you where I am. We're dead. The Honorable Rogelio Flores is one of the most respected judges sitting on the bench in Santa Barbara County. You know, I didn't write the laws. You didn't write the laws. But John Q. Citizen out there, you know, you know, mom and dad who are in the house and who get their alarm system and they're afraid and they're locked up in their houses, who vote, right? They're the ones that say, you know what, we're sick and tired of gangs. We're tired of it. And so we're going to come down with these laws, we want these laws passed to, to, to put a stop to the gangs. My name is Ann Bramson. I'm a senior deputy district attorney. I've been here for 14 years, and I currently handle our violent gang offenders. Ann Bramson is the premier gang prosecutor in Santa Barbara County. So many young people, even if they're not in gangs, make split-second decisions, right, that aren't always good. And gang members, you see that repeatedly, over and over again. It's that group mentality. In the case that I'm here for now, me and three of my co-defendants, one of us decides that he wants to steal off of a taco truck. So we all do it, drunk, not thinking about, oh, not thinking about the consequences, not thinking about anything. And we're so drunk that we don't even realize that we're being loud. So the owners come out and we all start getting crazy with them. I, I take off my shirt, I got a big tattoo across my chest. So automatically they're identifying me and we, get into it with them, start throwing a couple punches. At the end, the end, we get caught. The cops come. A couple weeks later, I find out that I'm facing a lot of time. I'm looking at 17 years at the worst for a bag of chips. So often we see a gang member in their early to mid 20s before the light bulb goes on. And it's not until then that they realize they should have made better choices. Some gangs intentionally have juvenile members commit crime because there is a misbelief that they will be punished less since they aren't 18 years old. Good evening, everyone. A 14-year-old is now among those charged with first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder with a gang enhancement. Ramon Maldonado Jr. is the 11th person charged by a jury in Santa Maria with the death of Anthony Ibarra. If a 14-year-old's involved in a gang crime that is a serious or violent crime, they will likely be tried in adult court and it will impact them forever. My name is Michael Scott. I'm presently in private practice here in Santa Maria. I'm also, uh, my specialty is criminal defense. Michael J. Scott enjoys a reputation as one of the most accomplished defense attorneys on the Central Coast. There's no exception for, oh, I'm only 17, so don't send me to prison. Uh, all too often, we are sending people who are just turning 18 or 17, and they will go to the youth authority, and then they will go to prison when they hit their 18th birthday. The legal consequences for committing gang crimes in California are severe. If it's a, it's a crime involving gang, an allegation of gang conduct, you can expect the sentence to double, triple, end up with a life on top. I mean, it's, it's, it is a whole new world out there. So there's gang allegations, which basically is just more punishment. So if you commit like a robbery, for example, you would do two years, three years, or five years in prison. 
However, if you commit it with a gang member, even if you're not a gang member, you'd add an extra 10 years to that sentence. So the gang sentencing makes a tremendous difference in the amount of time you're gonna do in prison. Whenever you get busted, you may think it's small, like stealing something. They could just say it was for the benefit of a street gang. It could possibly, potentially lead to life, 10 years, 15 years. Yeah, it's, it's not a joke. I can think of an example with a gang member named Derek Bullet Zermino. He felt disrespected by somebody driving down the street and he threw the beer bottle at the person who had just gotten out of his vehicle. And for that conduct, it's assault with a deadly weapon, even though it's a beer bottle. And he was looking at a maximum of 18 years in state prison as a gang member who committed the assault with the beer bottle. You don't have to actually be a gang member to be charged with a gang allegation. All you have to do is participate in a crime with a gang member. A lot of kids think, oh, I'm just hanging out with them, right? They might be gang members, but I'm not a gang member, and we're just going to a party, or we're just having fun. Well, the way the gang allegations are put together, they don't have to prove that you are a gang member, but if you're associating with known gang members in the commission of a crime, you pick up the gang allegation. We went to the Santa Maria Juvenile Hall and met with Randall Boswell, an ex-gang member from Lompoc, California. I wake up, staff opening our door, and just, just putting on this jumpsuit, just another day locked up, going to the table, eat breakfast, take our 10 seconds. After that, lock down, clean our room, staff come around, just brush our teeth, and just get ready for school. After that, lock down, usually I work out after school, go back to my room, probably read or sleep until I come off our day room, watch some TV, write a letter, some girls and family, you know what I mean? Then lock down, get our snacks, lock down, brush our teeth again. It's the night, it's the day. If you're thinking about banging or claiming a set or hood, it's not worth it. Think about your family, think about the stuff that you could miss out on and you can miss out on, like family, family parties, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all the food, tamales, all that stuff. But most of it, you have to think about yourself. Think about your future, thinking about what you want for yourself and for your family. All it takes is to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Your life can change in an instant. Joseph De Leon was a, was a hardcore Northwest gang member, and we went to go, well, the lady that was with us went to give him a ride, and when we were leaving the house, we got pulled over by the cops and got in a high-speed chase, and he ended up shooting at the police three times. And I got arrested for five counts of attempted murder, five counts of drive-by, five counts of shooting from a vehicle, and possession of, of methamphetamine. I was looking at life in prison. Uh, looks like the back uh, rear passenger is trying to... I need to shot at fire. Firing at him. He's firing at me. Shot fired. Natural and probable consequences says that if you start out to commit a simple crime, petty theft, uh, a simple battery, a misdemeanor, and in the course of that crime, a more serious crime is committed by one of your, your companions, uh, then you could be liable for that more serious crime, up to and including murder. A good example, fairly recent, the last few years, there was a homicide in Guadalupe, and a Santa Maria gang member was in Guadalupe. Uh, to visit friends and family. He went to a convenience store there and Guadalupe gang members happened to see him in the neighborhood. They confronted him and challenged him to fight. And in the course of that, uh, one of the young men who surrounded him uh, had a knife, unbeknownst to his, his companions, and stabbed the gentleman to death. He died. All of those people, not just the person with a knife, were charged with first degree murder. Gang members face many difficulties when they enter the courtroom. The gang allegation from a defense perspective is devastating for a number of reasons. One, when you're picking juries, juries don't like gangs. Have you ever tried to like convince 12 people that you're a good guy but you can't think of nothing to say about yourself? You know what I mean? Like I couldn't, I, there's nothing that I could do to um, show that I was living a, a positive, productive life in society. 
Second issue from a defense perspective is all those little things you did as a kid, I guarantee you the gang expert for the prosecution is going to get on the stand and every time you got in trouble or even didn't get in trouble but were with somebody who did get in trouble, they're going to recite all those instances to that jury and you're going to look bad to that jury. So from a defense perspective, they're very difficult to defend because the prosecution can introduce all this evidence that doesn't come in in a non-gang case and it works to the detriment and it makes it tougher to defend gang crimes and, and individuals charged with gang crimes. It's crazy nowadays because if you do something that's gang related, automatically the law is going gonna, gonna to be on you and there's, there's really no way around it. Judges have this unique perspective as we sit up and we look at the entire audience and the lawyers and and it, it really breaks my heart to see uh, young men and young women who are uh, charged with uh, gang-related conduct. And you see their parents in the courtroom, you see their children in the courtroom, and you see the, just the look on their eyes. I mean, that's, you know, you can't even describe the pain that, that, uh, that they're going through. I, I, got, I got three kids that hardly know me. You know, I got a, I got a wife right now that's on the verge of leaving me. Because, I mean, she, how can I expect her to go through this? They didn't do anything wrong. What did my kids do wrong? What did my kids do deserve not to have a father? First and foremost, the biggest thing that I missed out on is my kids. My kids. At the end of the day, I have three children. Uh, Jacob Carly Santino, love him to death. Never watched Santino soccer game. You know, he came up the other day and he uh, had his soccer uniform on. So uh, never get to see him play a soccer game. Uh, you know, never be at another birthday never be at a graduation, never get to send them on their way to college, and uh, just watch them become the beautiful people that they're going to become. Santino, Raul, Aguilera, and I'm eight years old. My dad's name is Jeremy Wallen. The worst part is that he's in jail, and I don't get to see him that much. I would pray that he would get out, and when I grown up, then he would um, really get out. So next time I see him, that it won't be so hard. It's just going to be me and him. My dreams are um, when he comes home and I can do fun, fun stuff with him. Was it worth it? No, it wasn't. Um, Tell me about that. Well, I have I have children. Uh, when I left this last time, my oldest, my son was four. My twins were uh, were three. I've missed out on everything, even waking up with them in the same bed. You leave behind children when you go to prison. Uh, when a person is killed, he or she leaves behind their parents often, their brothers, their sisters, their loved ones, and all of those people have tremendous emotional damage. People convicted in the 2010 murder of 15-year-old Destiny Myers will be going away for life. Let's get you up to speed on this. Rhonda Wistow and her son Frank York were found guilty of first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, kidnapping, and torture. They were sentenced today to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Destiny's beaten and burned body was found in a shallow grave near Santa Margarita in September of 2010. Destiny was a very high-strung child. Destiny had a mind of her own. She got a, caught up in a world that she didn't know how to get out of. And she was on the streets and she always told me, Grandma, my homie's got my back. Nothing's ever gonna happen to me. That was one of her key things to Grandma. It's okay, Grandma, it's okay, I'm gonna be okay. Obviously, it hasn't been okay. It wasn't okay. It's devastated our family, it's destroyed our family. Ultimately, you're not invincible, and you're gonna die if you don't stop doing what you're doing. And I think that's the part that 
we've had to learn so hard is the fact that you don't stop. We lost our precious 15-year-old granddaughter, daughter, friend to so many people, little girl, she was just a baby and they took her from us. These gangs took her from us. Reputation is absolutely important among, uh, amongst gang members. Gang members will go as far as to take a life of another individual in order to protect that reputation. Pues yo precisamente el día 10 de diciembre, que fue el último día que pues tuvimos en reunión el día de mi cumpleaños. Lo que se me extrañó que él casi nunca se arrimaba para tratarse con nosotros. Estaba con nosotros en los bares, pero y ese día se arrimó él a retratarse con es un es un dolor del corazón que se ataca feo se clava feo en, en el corazón lo más es un dolor fuertísimo que solo que solo lo siente como nosotros o las demás personas que han perdido a sus hijos cuando como dicen cuando uno pierde a sus papás pues se dice uno que son muy hermanos y cuando uno pierde a su mamá, a, a, un, a, su a su esposa pues es viudo o viuda pero cuando esto no tiene nombre lo de un hijo con sus papás mm. no, no, no hay un nombre para no tiene nombre What about your parents? No. You don't, you don't care about your parents, they love you, they want you to do something with your life. Not be like this, stuck here for the rest of your life or dead on the street. A lot of the kids that I grew up with that joined the gang, they had a lot of potential. But it's just the lifestyle that we live, it's just, it all goes to waste. I wish that I would have tried harder when I was growing up, tried harder to make something of myself. What a lot of our young people do today is the same thing that I did when I was young. I was on the tracks, and that's a, that's a term that I use with young people today. If you don't want to get hit by the train, stay off the tracks. Kids, when you're a young age, I hope you guys talk to your teachers more, get involved in school, play a sport. You know, I was good in sports, you know, I had everything going for me, but I chose to live a different lifestyle. And here I am, 34 years old, trying to make a life for myself now. I could have gone to college and became a lawyer, doctor, whatever, cop, fireman, anything I wanted to become. I had the potential to do whatever I wanted to do. But I threw all that away just because I wanted to be in the game. So my name is uh, Samuel Marin, or Sam. Uh, I, I had a difficult childhood, but I was able to, to ultimately learn from my mistakes. Sam moved to Santa Maria when he was 11 years old. His parents had just split up, and his father had just been sent back to prison. After the interview, he took us out to his old neighborhood to show us where he grew up. In that neighborhood, we were exposed to drugs, alcohol, violence, um, and unfortunately that's where I learned some of my, my, my behaviors, my self-destructive behaviors. Without the supervision of his parents, Sam started associating with the Northwest Gang and eventually was jumped in at the age of 15. I was arrested for being under the influence in public. Um, I was arrested for petty theft, stealing, uh, some a few things. Uh, I eventually hung out with uh, my siblings' friends who enticed me to to uh, drive a stolen car. Ultimately, I was sent to, to juvenile hall more than a few times. I went to uh, Tri County Boot Camp for about four months um, because of of my own actions. Mr. Flores once associated with gangs while growing up in Calexico, California. 
His mentor, Frank Donias, helped him stay focused on graduating from high school. I asked him, well, I don't want to go to school anymore. He goes, well, just come to my office. And to this day, I can't tell you what he told me. I can't tell you what the magic words were, what inspired me, but it kept me in school. And then I was able to graduate from high school. And then I joined the military service. I joined the United States Navy. And a lot of that motivation to join was to get further away from some of these things that were trying to draw me back in. The mentor in my life, he served, he served like a father figure that I, that, I, that I didn't have. At the age of about 11, my father was gone. And this was a male in my life that encouraged me. Um, he didn't judge me. He didn't judge me in a harsh way. Uh, he was there for me when I needed it. It is very important that students find mentors, whether it be a peer, counselor, coach, or even a teacher. A lot of times we can understand these kids better than the parents because oftentimes the parents don't understand the education system. They don't understand what they're going through. And I think it's vital that a student seeks an adult at the school that they can, that can be that go-to person. Education is going to be the hope that's going to get them out of this, this circle that they've been born into, many of them. It's gonna provide them with a way out. And many of them don't feel like there is a way out. They feel like this is it, this is what's normal. They conform to the lifestyle of poverty. A way to not make yourself such a prime target for gangs would be to get involved with school activities obviously to do well in school. A lot of what happens when you do that is you're no, you're no longer uh, the, type of, the type of student that gangs are looking for. After Sam graduated from Santa Maria High School, he received his AA degree from Allen Hancock College. Then he got his bachelor's degree in legal studies from Chapman University. Furthering my educational career, I've, I've had the opportunities to do a lot of things that, that I enjoyed. I've volunteered in the legal field and have, have worked in the legal field, which I've really enjoyed. I've had the opportunity to travel. I, I went to uh, China in 2008. Education has helped me see that there's a better future with, with the more education you, you obtain and a, and a higher income. Um, through, throughout the rest of your life. And that's why I'm in the process of uh, earning my, uh, my paralegal degree. I think the best advice I can give a youth, male or female, is just not to be who people want you to be. Be who you want yourself to be. Krista works at the YMCA in Santa Maria and encourages youth to join in their internship programs to be mentored in a positive environment with their peers. It's mentors working with peers. It's just peer on peer, and they just feel that, that sense of belongingness, or that sense of pride. They develop that self-worth, um, that spark that, that youth need. Become an individual. Become a little selfish. Become a leader. Think about yourself. Because as much as you think that gang's gonna be there for you, in your darkest hour, there's not going to be nobody there to support you. That's the sad truth about it. If, if, if you're in trouble and you want help, all you have to say is, I need help. And doggone it, if, and, and if no one will help you, come see me and I'll, I'll, I'll find out. We'll figure out some way to help you out of this mess. At the end of the day, nobody knows what you're going through until you tell them. Nobody knows if you're getting pressured. Nobody knows what's inside of your heart until you let someone in. Uh, I let drugs and I let gangs in, and for that, I'm going to die in prison. We all have a choice. Um, it might be difficult uh, for some, considering their environment. Nonetheless, it's, it's ultimately up to them to, to choose what they want in life. Focus on you, do you, and just 
Think before you act, think about the consequences. There's nothing cool about this. This, this life sucks. I have a 13 year old son. I don't want him to be like me. If you get involved in these gangs, you're gonna spend a lot of time behind bars with other guys, okay? Not doing the sort of stuff you wanna do, not hanging with the people you wanna hang with, and uh, it is a big price to pay. I always told the kids, stop, think, and choose. Because once you've made the wrong choice and you've, you've crossed over that line, there's no turning back. You only have one life. And while we all do mistakes and, and we can um, have a second chance, know that if you get involved with gangs, you may not get a second chance. The life that they were born into is not the life they have to live. They can change it. And education is going to be their only way to be able to change it. As I sit here today, um, I share my story with you. Uh, with the hopes that uh, none of you follow in my footsteps. So I hope that each and every one of you today take advantage of the opportunities that you have and the programs that you have. I hope that anything that you have seen in this video, uh, any word that I have said today, keeps you from this place. And I ask that you please reach out and get the help that you need, because it's there. Thank you. Santa Maria, Lompoc, Carpinteria, Goleta, and Santa Barbara. It's time the truth be told. We are all stakeholders in the reduction of gang violence and uh, really gang membership. I've never met a young boy or girl who has ever stated that when they grow up they want to be a gang member, commit felonies, get prosecuted, um, uh, arrested by the police several times, and then spend maybe a dozen or two dozen years of their life in prison. You just don't see that. And so what we need to do is to capture these youth when they're young and impressionable. So if we can just prevent one child from joining a gang, then this video and the cost for it was worth every penny. It is our goal through this documentary to raise awareness about the gang problem on the Central Coast. First, you will hear gang members expose the truth about their lifestyle. Then we will help you understand relevant gang laws and show how gang involvement affects families. Lastly, we will emphasize how education can lead to a better future. There is nobody more qualified to educate people about the gang culture than those who have personally lived the lifestyle. Hands behind your backs. No talking. The boys are doing time with the EDGE program. It's for young men teetering on the edge of right and wrong. Wearing white jumpsuits and walking with their hands behind their backs, the boys will get a taste of prison life from those who know it best. Welcome to the EDGE program. My name is Jeremiah Daniel Wallen. I'm 31 years old. I'm doing 98 years to life for execution-style murder, kidnapping, robbery. You could have told me, Jeremiah, you're on a path to doing life in prison. And I would have told you, so what? Who cares? That's what I want. My name's Adam Ibarra, better known as Little Boo Boo, from, from Westside Gang in Lompoc. 
banging since I was 12. I've been around gangs my whole life, third generation gang member. I was six years old at hood parties, you know what I mean? Kicking it. Um, shot my first person when I was 12, you know what I mean? I'm 28 years old right now, and out of those 28 years, I've been locked up for about a good 15 of them, you know, in and out. This last time I was out, I was out 113 days, and that's the longest I've been out since I was 13. The central coast of California is known for its high quality of life, small town atmosphere, award-winning golf courses and wineries, great weather, and our proximity to the spectacular coastline. But beneath it all, hiding in the shadows, is a sinister culture that infects our communities. Violent criminal street gangs are no longer a problem unique to big cities. They exist right here among us. They are becoming more organized and bold than ever before. Using manipulation and deception to recruit our youth, these gangs are ruining lives and destroying families. It is time to tell the truth, expose the lies. For many gang-involved youth, their lifestyle is a life-facing bond. There are over 1,000 documented gang members in the city of Santa Maria. Between late 2009 to 2013, 88% of the murders in the city were gang-related. The disease of street gangs affects both San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara counties. There are organized criminal street gangs in Paso Robles, Napomo, Oceano, Guadalupe. Way of life. Arthur Navarro's Vice Familia, Santa Bruta, Santa Barbara. When I was a kid, there wasn't a lot of, uh, I was with my mom, there wasn't a lot of parental supervision. So it was a lot of surviving upon myself, which exposed me to criminal activity. I'm 39 years old. I first got taken into custody at the age of 17. I can't tell you how much I spent in custody. I can only tell you that I've spent about five years out of custody since. My name is Jonathan Myers from Santa Maria, from the projects. They used to call me Blanco. I started gangbanging at the age of 12. I just saw my friends, and I saw like older, older friends. Like I, I just saw them, like what it got them. I, I thought like you would be somebody. Just, beating people up, jumping people, just going, going with my homies when they would shoot at people, joining the gang, thought I'd gain you power, respect. Them low-life drug addicts don't care about you, and they're not your friends. Because what type of adult, knowing the consequences, gives kids drugs and guns, and watches them throw their whole life? My name's Isaiah Arroyo, call me Cholo from Northwest, Santa Maria. I got jumped in when I was 13, 13 years old. I grew up in the projects, so it's like, that area is like a lot of gang members kick it there. And I just thought, I just started hanging around with the wrong crowd. Like, they carried themselves like if they were better than everybody. And like, for some reason, like, I, to me it seemed like they had all the respect and like that's, that's what I needed to be. Like I wanted to be like them. My name is Ronnie Claiborne. Call me Disciple for Nipah's Gangsters. I was 12 when I got jumped in. My mom worked out of town like six days a week, and my stepdad was was Tinker, Jesse Maldonado for Nipah's. So her being gone and me being by myself, I was always right there with him, you know, and he always had all the older homies over and their kids and so on and so forth. My charges are carjacking, extortion, home invasion, robbery, gang enhancements participating in a criminal street gang for the further advancement of a criminal street gang. And I was looking at approximately 20.